place. I thereafter saw the ad and I applied for the position having been quite interested in what I experienced on the day of the elections. Yes. Um, a, an electoral environment of this nature, of the nature that requires the attention of your court, as and when there are disputes, tends to be somewhat um, volatile. It's a charged environment, and it arguably requires some understanding of the political environment. How, what is it that prepared you for uh, fulfilling your role in that environment more meaningfully? CJ, I don't think one can ever be uh, totally prepared sure. before you've actually sat in the court and experienced the reality of it. But I think the fact that I've acted as a magistrate in the Bloemfontein courts and surrounding courts, which are fairly busy courts where there's pressure and one needs to get decisions and judgments out quickly. And I think that scenario would have stood me in good stead. What I've learned from acting uh, regarding the conduct of proceedings, case flow management, the necessity of good time management, uh, the concepts of judicial independence and accountability, all of those lessons will stand me in good stead when I come under what no doubt will be some severe pressure in the electoral court. Is it fair to say that there are things about politics or a political environment or a politically charged environment that require much more than an understanding of the law to do justice to the issues? I think as a judicial officer in any court, but probably more so in the electoral court, a judicial officer has to be constitutionally aware and enlightened and aware of what's happening around him politically. So I, I don't think I would be correct in thinking if I did that just being a judicial officer and just knowing the law would be sufficient. No, it wouldn't, CJ. How would you say you've equipped yourself for that environment so that no matter the nuances, you'll be equal to the task of dealing with these at times sensitive, at times volatile, at times nuanced matters in a manner that ultimately result in real justice being done? CJ, I keep myself fairly well informed about current affairs what's happening in our country. Although I'm not politically active, so to speak, I do take an interest in the activity and, and, uh, of politicians and, and, and what is happening politically in the country. So I am, I am aware of what is, what is happening when it's happening, and that would be used in, in my understanding and my judgments in the electoral court. And uh, that, that has given you, would you say, a, sense, a fair sense of what implications could flow from a decision you might have to take in, in an environment such as this? I think it does, CJ. Very well. Um, uh, Justice uh, Shongwe? Thank you, CJ. Mr. Lawrence, how are you? Find yourself. I'm not sure whether I should address you as JP or chair. <laughs> he prefers chair, actually. Well, the law says I'm a chairperson. Now, uh, I heard you say that you are not a politically active. Are you a member of a political party? I, I am not chair. Now, you also indicated that. Um, you have acted as a magistrate. Correct, sir. Now, when you are not acting as a magistrate, what do you do? Because I, I would understand that you have a stint to act as a magistrate, 
And when you are not acting, what do you do? Chair, I've been acting as a magistrate for the last 40 months. 14 months. 40, 4 40, zero. 40 months. So you, 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 you're not appointed for a certain period, a term or a year, or, and then you renew it? What, how Chair, I'm appointed um, for three months at a time, and then uh, motivation is done on an extension of the contract for a further three months. So every three months, uh, the Deputy Minister will make a decision whether or not to renew the contract. So ha have, you, have you applied to be a magistrate? I made application on the last round uh, for one vacancy. There was one vacancy in Bloemfontein and I was not shortlisted. In the 40 months, you applied once? There was only one round of adverts, Chair. Uh, I see, I see, I see. Now, you see, you mentioned that you, 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 you were a, an independent observer. In other words, you were requested by the local IEC to assist them. Am I correct? Uh, Chair, I was accredited through the Law Society of South Africa. Law Society of South Africa. Correct. I see. And I'm sure you, you will appreciate that being an observer in an election situation is far much different from being a presiding officer in a court of law. Yes, Chair, uh, w without a doubt, uh, being an observer would only cover Chapter 4, Parts 1, 2, 3, and 5. Do you know how many members of this court are there at the present moment? Three, Chair. Now, in terms of uh, Section 174, two of the Constitution, it provides, amongst others, that the, this body should consider when appointing judicial officers in this court, the racial and gender composition of the South African population. What is your thought about that provision? Thank you, Chair. Without hesitation, Chair, I must concede that I am not the ideal candidate in terms of Section 174.2 of the Constitution. I, when I woke up this morning, and I'm sure when I wake up tomorrow, I will still be white and I will still be male. And unfortunately, those are not the ideal uh, characteristics. In terms of gender, I think we are on the high court bench at 36% female. And I think on the high court bench, 34% white. So I, I, I don't fit in terms of section 174.2, I make that concession. Well, w I'm right. referring uh, specifically with the present constitution of the court, uh, the, 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 the members of that court. M maybe you could just remind him, uh, Chair, of how it's composed yeah. so that uh, he has a clear understanding of where you get into. Thank you. So well, we, at the present moment, as you indicated that we are three, there are Three, uh, two, it is myself as the chairperson, and there are two uh, white male members of the court at the present moment. And uh, I see there's a candidate who is also coming, a female. Yes, Chair, I, I'm aware of that. That's why I make the concession readily. Chief Justice, I've got no further questions. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Commissioner Nyambi, if you could switch off your mic, Chair. Thanks, CJ. Afternoon, uh, Mr. Lawrence. Afternoon, Commissioner. When you responded to CJ, you said you keep yourself aware about current affairs. If you can share with us, how are you able to keep yourself aware with current affairs? And please try to be as brief as possible. Thank you, Commissioner. I keep myself aware via the media primarily. Uh, 
I also uh, am involved um, with discussions of, with colleagues and such forth. So I, I keep myself up to date with what's transpiring in current affairs in the country. In more than three years, you said you avail yourself once uh, for the position of being a magistrate. You were aware once that there was a position. Are you implying that it, it was only one chance or it's only once that you are aware? No, C Commissioner, I, I applied for a position, a permanent position as a magistrate in Bloemfontein. Uh, my position was such that I practiced in Port Elizabeth for approximately 18 years and had a paralegal training school for approximately five. Uh, I am of the belief that equality is a serious issue. I believe it starts at home as a result of which I agreed to a move when my wife was promoted and moved to Bloemfontein. Uh, the entire family moved here, and it would have made no sense for me at that stage to apply for any other area other than Bloemfontein. Um, so that's the only area that I applied for in order to remain here with my family. Thank you, CJ. Thank you, Commissioner Nyambi, Minister. <coughs> Thanks for clarifying the last point uh, upon the <coughs> question by uh, uh, Honorable Nyambi, because in answering this question earlier, he said the occasion, the opportunity occurred only once in the period that you have acted, and um, it was a bit confusing. Um, but <clears throat> something that uh, strikes me is that the last uh, batch that was uh, appointed in the magistracy was in the order of close to 200. And you are saying that you were not even shortlisted in that huge batch. Uh, and that was not the only huge batch, say, in the last five years. Um, could there have been any particular considerations in your view which could have uh, resulted in you not even being considered for shortlisting, um, if any? And of course, if it's an unfair question, you, you don't have to answer it because you wouldn't necessarily know the minds of those that shortlist. Thank you, Minister. I apologize for the confusion that I might have caused by my previous answer. In my time that I've been acting, there's only been one post or one vacancy advertised for the Bloemfontein Magistrates Court. That, that vacancy I indeed applied for. I was not shortlisted. There were two acting magistrates um, who better fitted the provisions contained in section 174.2 uh, of the constitution. Both those magistrates were shortlisted for that one vacancy. One subsequently was appointed and there is no reason other than that that I was given for me not being shortlisted. Yeah. But this confuses me even more because the position you're applying for, as I understand it, is not necessarily located in Bloemfontein. And yet, it seems as if you forfeited the opportunities that avail themselves, dare I say, in their hundreds, since you've started acting, of joining the magistracy and chose to only apply for only one out of those hundreds of uh, vacancies in, in Bloemfontein because you preferred for family and other circumstances to be in Bloemfontein. And yet the, this court, as I understand it, is not located in Bloemfontein. Thank I, I'm, you. I'm a bit confused. Uh, please thank you. Me. Thank you, Minister. As I understand it, I'm, I stand to be corrected. The seat of the electoral court is in Bloemfontein in oh. the offices of the SCA. I have subsequently, in fact, I posted my application yesterday for appointment as a magistrate to Bloemfontein, Pietrasburg, where I'm currently acting head of office, and Bocciabella. 
And finally, I hope this is also not an unfair question. I, is it for convenience that a position arose in Bloemfontein in the electoral court as opposed to any other judicial appointment anywhere else that motivated you specifically to apply for the electoral court? Or do you feel that you are ready and the ideal candidate for taking up a position in that specific court, not just because it happens to be located in Bloemfontein, which would have been Thank you, Minister. I, I believe that I am ready. I believe that I am barring the provisions of Section 174 to an ideal candidate for appointment to the electoral court. And coincidentally, uh, Minister, it is a convenient location, but that's not the reason. Thank you, Minister. Commissioner Ngozi Thomas. Thank you, Chief Justice, and uh, good afternoon, Mr. Lawrence. Good afternoon, Commissioner. Mr. Lawrence, the court to which you are applying, namely the Electoral Court, is not only a, um, a specialized or a specialist court, but it, it is also a species of an agent court, if I may put it that way, because matters that go there require to be dealt with as agently as possible, given the fact that half the time the elections would be underway or about to be commenced with. So my question to you with that in mind is what exposure, if any, have you heard to the legal framework that applies to election law as well as the uh, the jurisprudence in that regard. You'll think, well, you know, cases such as Tlokwe, Langebeck Municipality, August for that matter, there's been a whole host of pronouncements by the Constitutional Court. Now, my question is, apart from being a, an observer at the IEC, have you ever been challenged to deal technically and forensically with that, uh, uh, with the legal framework, as it were? Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. I have, I have never appeared or litigated in the Electoral Court, nor have I adjudicated matters in the Electoral Court. I do have a general understanding of the legal framework which governs the proceedings in that court. I am aware of cases, by way of example, you mentioned August and the right of prisoners to vote and the fact that the actions of the Commission the Electoral Commission, not this commission, um, effectively amounted to disenfranchisement of those voters. Um, I am aware that the court in essence said there that it is the function of the commission to determine how and not who votes. Uh, so I am, I am aware of some of the case authorities that govern the Electoral Court. Um, the Tlokwe municipality matters of Kam and Mklope, I'm aware of those decisions. Um, the recent SCA decision on um, the Cape Party, where it decided that its jurisdiction for uh, by-elections was not usurped in terms of Section 96.1 of the Electoral Act. I have a, a general understanding. It, it, it is a fairly complicated set of of, of acts, um, and I wouldn't say I'm an expert by any means, but I take comfort in the fact that if I were to be recommended and appointed, I would have the guidance and support of three very experienced and senior judges um, from whom I could learn an incredible amount. Just very briefly, is it, is it fair to say you are not just aware you've studied those judgments? I have and, looked at- and, and the legislation. Thank you, CJ. I have looked at, at, at the authorities. Yes, CJ. Um, you are done. Uh, I am indeed. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. Commissioner. Oh, sorry. Thank you, uh, Chief Justice. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Lawrence. Afternoon, Commissioner. Uh, Chief Justice, I'm not going to canvas the point about what prompted you to apply because I think the chairperson and the CJ and Commissioner Corsi canvassed that. But just for clarity, uh, only after you acted as an observer, you thought you were ready. Inter alia, the other fact about judgments, you thought you were ready to apply for this post. Am I correct in that? 
Commissioner, if I understand your question correctly, my answer would be no. I, I, my interest was piqued when I, when I observed uh, the various procedures at, at the elections, but by no means at that stage was I ready to make the application I made today. Okay, I won't canvass that further. I just want to ask you one question. Uh, in the South African context, political context, there is a political party which I shall not name. In the last elections, they put out an active message to, to South Africans, don't waste your vote on small parties. What is your view to that kind of thinking? Mr. Commissioner, in, in, in principle, I would, uh, I would obviously want to, to have the full facts before me before I made any kind of judgment on it. But in principle, I think uh, fairness must prevail in campaigning. And if the campaigning is such that it affects another party unfairly, I think the court would have to look at that. Chief Justice, just to follow up. I'm asking not from the court point of view, but just your general view. Uh, and I thought you would talk about multi-party democracy and South Africa being a country that allows you know, multi-party democracy and every party should have a right to contest an election. I mean, that's the kind of answer I was looking for. So when somebody says, don't waste your vote on a smaller political party, I mean, what's, what's your view? I, I, Mr. Commissioner, I'd have no problem as long as the conduct falls within the electoral code of conduct. Commissioner Nogues, thank you, Chief Justice, for your questions. Um, I'm just looking on your the answers to your questionnaire, on your questionnaire. In 2014, 2015, 16, and 17, you say you're a member of FNATEL and you serve in the committee of FNATEL in that branch. Tell me who in 2014 was the Secretary General of FNATEL nationally. Thank you, Mr. Commissioner. If my memory serves me correctly, it was Judge Judgey, I think. And lastly, let's take care. Just, Alan, if you, if you go... I mean, uh, Commissioner, your, your, your mouth uh, sorry, sorry. Is, is sh has shifted no, from you. the mic. And then, and then uh, <laughs> I note in your answers that... Uh, you were a member of SASCO in 1991 and subsequent years, ANC Youth League in 1991 and subsequent years, up until 1993, of course. When did you cease to be, in fact, no, I mean, you're no longer a member of the, of the, of the Youth League, of course, because of your age. Did you at any stage join the mother body of the uh, ANC Youth League? Mr. Commissioner, I did, I did not. Why not? What was the reason? In 1993, I made a decision that I could better help my community through the practice and, and application of law, and I decided that I was certainly no politician. Oh, thank you, Chief Justice. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner Didiza? Thank you very much, uh, CJ. In your response, but also in the document, you mentioned that you were an observer uh, in one of the elections. I wanted to know how long was that period? Do you think it <coughs> helped you to understand or rather to enthuse you that you can undertake this responsibility as a judge in the court? Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, in preparation for uh, acting as a observer at the elections. There was a law society uh, course that had to be attended and the actual observation occurred from approximately six in the morning to six the next morning. Uh, but I would say, uh, Commissioner, that having practically seen the election take place, I was better placed, for example, when reading one of the judgments by Judge Vepner to understand what he was talking about, for example, when he mentioned that there may be a problem in the next national elections with, for example, marking of identity documents. 
because if you if, if you practically understand how the procedure works you it, it enables you to more easily understand um, what is being said in for example this judgment where the the provisions of the electoral act provide for the marking of an identity document but the municipal election act does not so how do you mark an identity card? It's something that needs to be looked at, which I probably would not have understood uh, from the judgment had I not practically seen it. Thank you, uh, Mr. Lawrence. You're excused. Thank you, CJ, members of the commission. Thank you.